Sierra Torre. They used to call it the hardest mountain in the world. Now they just call it the best. I was dying to climb the Torre, but year after year I jet down to Argentina and watch my dreams get blown away. This year, as soon as I bust into El Shal 10, we had a weather window, so Ben Erdman and I packed our bags and beat it up the trail towards Nipponino. A loosely defined high camp close by the Fitzroy Massif. We'd set our sights on the Ragni route. Carla Mori and Walter Bonatti first tried the route in 1958. Sixteen years later, Casimiro Ferrari and an Italian team bagged the first ascent after nearly two months of attempts. We had two days. Down here in Argentina, this is the food we got. Mm. The real stuff. The bees need. The Italians said the face had some of the most incredible ice formations on Earth. And we were on it. We busted up the valley to the base of the Col Stanhart. We sat in the sun and set up the tent in this great white wilderness and knocked off. I'd been fighting a cold for a couple days, but felt better in the morning, so we bolted for Call Stanhart with me out front breaking trail. It was hot as hell and a couple miles away, we'd hear shit raining off Stanhart like crazy. We, all the way up over the call. we worked up to the notch and anchored below a granite block the size of a sprinter van. And whatever's holding that bastard in place, that ain't much. We rappelled down the other side of the notch and made camp at the Fiola de Rosa, out on the flat white glacier. The weather was holding, and we were jacked to finally make a run at the Torrey. We set off around 10 p.m. that night. At the crack of dawn, we could just make out the easy climbing before the Col de Esperanza, which had avalanched the afternoon before when the face heated up. We hoped it would stay cool up high. Ben and I swapped leads, pretty much running over good ice and mixed climbing. But we kept having to dodge big ice chunks all the way up to the head wall. The day was heating up fast, and that was bad news considering the thin ice fins towering above us. The geometry of the Ragni route is like an engineering project gone mad. I led the head wall okay, but the snow was getting sloppy and my tools were pulling to the crud. A couple times I got off route and had to claw over some overhanging snow, scared out of my mind. By 4 p.m. I had to dig and scrape to find any purchase for my tools. It was starting to get epic. We had two more pitches to go. Word was that the last pitch was dangerous. The first was the notorious tunnel pitch. Polar winds have blown big holes in the ice, like wormwood, and you have to burrow up spooky blue shafts till you finally break out just below the summit the final lead, the highlight of the route. I took one look overhead and knew if I didn't buck up and get on with it, we'd never get up this mountain. The guidebook said 50 meters of vertical frost with the consistency of cotton candy. It looked worse. Essentially one of the most fucked up ice pitches in the world right here. Jay Ross on lead. I had a snow picket clipped to my side and a short ways off the blade I stabbed the picket into some corn snow and started stimming up a dicey half tunnel. Seemed like in seconds I was 60 feet out with Bunk Pro, and if one of those mashed potato holes mushed away, I'd be off for a mega crash landing on the ledge and would break my damn legs and probably rip us both off the mountain. I finally got a decent screw in and forgot I was cruxing out and just fought on. Finally I squeezed through a tiny tunnel and rigged a belay a few feet below the top of the torii. I brought Ben up and he clawed up onto the summit. We took a few shots and started down because our weather window was about to slam shut. Now let's get the fuck out of here. I was wasted and happy to let my bro take the lead on the descent. When we reached our tent the next morning, wind was lashing the Tory like mad. We packed up, ate the last of our food, and started for Paso Marconi. Although we have one heck of a labyrinth to get out of here yet still. We gotta go and traverse the toe of the Marconi Glacier, drop into the Rio Electrico Valley, to walk for another six hours out. I'm not sure about the mileage, 
of the tromp out to Marconi as gradual uphill for hours and hours, and it kicked our ass. On one side is a sea of white glacier that runs off the horizon, and the other side are mountains that seem to move with you, as though you're not getting anywhere. I'd single out a ridge or a tower and guess how long to get there and would always be wrong by hours. It ain't over till it's over. This place has a way of not letting go to the very last. It felt like days, but we finally tromped out to some trails and pastures and staggered out to El Chaltén. 